This is called Rail Fence Ripple. It's for rotary cutting or for AccuQuilt. And there are four block sizes in these instructions. This was originally done by Becky Kogan for Needle Love and the block is part of a free quilt pattern available from All People Quilt. You can click or scan on this code to download her pattern. The quilt she did finished at 54 inches by 72 inches and it uses 6 inch blocks made from fat quarters and that's the one I'm doing today. Instructions are here for the 6 inch finished block. Here are the rotary cutting instructions and the AccuQuilt dies that you use. There are instructions here of how to piece the block. It's all done strip piecing. And down here we have three additional sizes of quilt blocks. 8 inch, 12 inch, and 16 inch finished blocks because I know a 6 inch block is very small and a lot of people don't like working with small blocks. So for the different sizes, you have the strip size you cut and you have the cut segments. Once you strip piece and then you cut them in segments, that's this here for these finished sizes. And this column tells you how many strips you need to make so many blocks. So for the 8 inch finished block, you'll need one strip of each fabric, a light and a dark. That's a width of fabric strip and that will make two blocks. What we're going to do first is calculate how many blocks you need for the size quilt you need and for whatever size block you're using. I'm going to use the sample of the quilt I did for the 6 inch finished block. So let's go to the quilting apps and we'll see how to size a quilt. This is the page on my blog that contains two quilting apps. For the first app on the page is called Sizing a Quilt. This will answer the question, how many blocks do I need for whatever size quilt you want? And all you need to know is the block size in length and width and about how big you want the quilt to be in inches. You can't just say queen size. You have to come up with a, a size in inches. And for our example, we're going to use 60 by 80 inches as my desired quilt size. And I'm going to use the 6 inch block, but you can use any block size you like. So I wanted my quilt to be 60 inches by about 80 inches. So I write that down. And now we're going to fill in the block sizes. So my block size was 6 inch finished. So I'll put in the width, I'll put 6 inches, and the length, I'll put 6 inches. And then we go to the next section and we put in the blocks across and the blocks down. And this is sort of a process of elimination. You just kind of guess unless if you don't know. So I'm going to try with eight blocks across and 10 blocks down. And then we'll press this calculate button. Our results give us a quilt width of 48 inches and a length of 60 inches. Well, that's not what I need. So let's try 10 blocks across and 12 blocks down. Then we press the calculate button again. And now I have 60 by 72. So that's going to be close enough to me. I could probably add another row to make it 78 inches, but I'm fine with this. So now my finished quilt will be 60 by 72. So I'm going to write down all these numbers. And then this tells me there will be 10 blocks across, so 10 blocks in a row, and there will be 12 rows, 12 blocks down. So I'll write that down to 10 by 12 setting. And then if you look further down here, it calculates the number of binding strips you need and how much binding yardage you need. So for this that size quilt, this is what you'll need. So you might want to write that down if you don't plan to change the size of your quilt. I wanted to show you how I cut my strips for the 6 inch block using the AccuQuilt. Now for the 6 inch block you need strips that are cut one and a quarter inches. And this is strip die number 55109. It cuts seven one and a quarter inch strips at once. 
So I'm using fat quarters and I need two strips at one and a quarter inches by 18 inches. So I'm going to fold it so it makes an 18 inch strip like this. I'm going to cut most of this fat, fat quarter into strips to make the rail fence ripple. So what I'm doing is you line up this line, the straight line here, and the blades go just past this line a little bit. So this is my 18 inches and I folded it in half. I'm lining up this edge with the straight line and I'm moving it down and watching this blade right here to make sure I have enough fabric that it will cut. So the fabric has to extend just slightly over that blade. It extends here, it's lined up here, and then I have extra down here. I could actually get another set of strips out of this, but I want to leave this part here for another project. So I'll be cutting two strips at a time, times seven. And this will be enough to make seven blocks of the dark fabric. And if you take a light fabric and put it, do the same thing and put it on top, you'll be cutting four layers of fabric at once and you'll be cutting enough for seven blocks of the six inch blocks. So then I would just put my mat on top and run these through and I will have 14 strips at one and a quarter inches times 18 inches. And then I'll have probably about three inches left over here from the fold side. Here are the fabrics I've chosen for this one. And I've got my two light and two dark strips. They're 18 inches by one and a quarter inches. And we're just going to put these right sides together and stitch along the long side on both of them and press the seams. I have my two strips sewn and pressed, and I'm going to use the stripology ruler to cut these into two inch segments. So what I've done here, I know I can clear 16 and a half inches on this mat. So I've got it at the 16 inch line, the first one. And I've got them over this line number one because I'm going to trim off these ragged edges. And then I want to make sure that I have the 18 inch mark covered over here. And I'm laying these down. So this next one I'll put on the next mark down here. So just line up the bottom edge of the fabric and then put this one on next. Now I'm going to use the stripology ruler and cut all these into two inch segments. I'm just lining up the lines of the ruler and try not to move anything. So these lines are lined up down here, and the lines are lined up down here, and I'm clear to cut up here. Actually, I'm going to move it up a little bit more, make sure I have a lot of room to cut. Now I'm going to start at the zero mark, and this will cut off the, the ragged edges here, and then the rest will be two inches. I put the ruler upside down, so I'll have to look up here and follow my line down here and hope I get it right, because I'm not going to move it now. 14, now 12, now 10, 8. This isn't the way you would normally cut these. I put the ruler down upside down. And if I hadn't already cut the edge on the other side, I would not be doing this. All right, so let's take this up. And now we'll take off these ragged edges here and take off the excess here. And then we have all of our two inch pieces. Okay, so I'm going to make four blocks. One, two, three, four. And for all of these, we'll just follow the diagram on step three. And we'll put one like this, and like that, and this, and that. 
and you'll sew four of these like this. So these two together and these two, press the seams and then sew these two together. So now make four of those for each of the fabrics. Here are the four six inch blocks that I've done and we now we lay them out and sew them all together. You can, you can sew them in blocks like this or you can just simply sew them in rows if you're doing the whole quilt. What you'll want to do is make sure they all go in the same direction. So one of these has to be up at the top and let's go this way because I want them all to go up and to the right. So this is going down. We'll put this this way. And then if you put these together, they continue. So we'll see this one needs to be turned. So they continue. This one. This one's right. So now I'll stitch these two together and these two. Press the seams and then sew the two rows together. I found it was easier to press these seams to one side and it's a little bit harder to actually try to press them open. If you're having trouble pressing them open, then try pressing to one side. See how you like that. This is how I sort of mix up my blocks before I put them on the design wall. Whenever I have stacks, there's probably anywhere from three to seven of the same fabric in each of the stacks. So I have them all in their own stacks. Here's blue, pink, or sort of peach color. And what I do is I just pick from the top one and go to the next one. Just keep taking the top one and put it at the bottom and go in order Then start over here. And I do this until everything is stacked in one stack. Here is my stack of 120. I'm going to set these blocks 10 across and 12 down. So I'm just going to take the first 10 and that's my first row and put it on the design wall. After seeing the pictures of the final layout, I decided to move around some of the blocks. All the light ones tended to be in that diagonal line, so I switched around a bunch of them. Next, I put them on my numbered charms and numbered all the rows and they're ready to sew. So we'll do that next. Once I sewed all the blocks together into 12 different rows, I started sewing sets of four rows together. So I sewed rows one through four together, and then I pressed. Then I sewed the next rows five through eight together, then I pressed, and finally I sewed nine through 12 together, and then pressed those and sewed the three panels together to finish the quilt. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and while you're at it, Click the bell to be notified of future videos.